Welcome to our how to video for completing the application annex, which is in Excel spreadsheet format. This video builds on the how to fill in an application form videos, of which there are two parts. It is recommended to watch all three videos which cover the application process. The application annex is an Excel spreadsheet format and is specific to the initiation form funding stream you are applying under. The annex has been aligned with grant intervention rates and the primary outputs relating to the specific funding stream. All applications must have the relevant annex fully completed and submitted alongside the application form and necessary supporting documents by the application deadline. We can only consider complete applications. Incomplete applications will be returned and the applicant invited to future rounds if applicable. For this video, I'll be talking through the Town, Rural and Coastal High Street Development and Skills Programme, BUS 006 Annex as an example. The approach to completing the Annex is similar for all the funding streams. Tab 1, Cash Flow. Complete this tab with the project specific cash flow. We do not need to see a business cash flow. Please note that if successful, project delivery must have physically completed and the final claim submitted by the 31st of March 2025. For project capital expenditure, we need to include all project costs relating to capital expenses, e.g. construction and equipment costs. General headings are acceptable, e.g. groundworks or electrical wiring installation and commissioning of a production line. Professional fees linked to capital costs must not exceed 15% and can be included as capital expenditure, e.g. architect or building project management fees. Costs should link back to the tendering and procurement you have completed to arrive at the project costs. The headings will also be cross-referenced for claims forms should you be, your project be successful. Similarly, for revenue expenditure, list all the project expenses e.g. IT equipment and consumables. By completing the capital and revenue costs, you should now have a total project cost amount. This should be supported and evidenced by the tendering and procurement approach you have followed, e.g. quotes or professional estimates from quantity surveyors. If the latter, these costs will need to be followed up by a quote. For project income, please list all income sources for the project. The Shared Prosperity Fund amount request will need to be broken down. We normally pay grant quarterly in arrears, so please reflect this in the cash flow. For community, social and new innovative projects, we may be able to consider other options such as monthly payments, but this is on a case by case basis with rationale required. Please list other private and public match funding sources that will complement your SPF request. SPF can accept public match funding in addition to the SPF request. Match funding could include bank loans, cash reserves, from the business, heritage lottery funding and other public grants. Check your figures carefully and that they reflect the evidence that you've got to support it, e.g. letters of confirmation from match funding providers. Tab 2, funding package. Please detail your funding package. Column E, percentage of intervention rate should add up to give a percentage intervention rate of 100% at row 10. The funding sources should align with the project income source in tab one cash flow. Match fund cash funding is normally expected. So this is tangible money moving into the applicant's business account to contribute towards a project expenditure. There may be some cases where in-kind funding can be considered, e.g. volunteer time for community projects. If unclear where your funding fits, please email the Good Grace team for clarification. 
tab 3a output targets in return for shared prosperity funding we are looking for projects that deliver program outputs by the 31st of march 2025 the more program outputs delivered for the amount of grant requested the better the value for money case this needs to be balanced with the outputs being deliverable and realistic if successful outputs will form part of your grant funding agreement primary outputs not all projects not all outputs may be applicable to your project so please select the outputs that are relevant and quantify them when quantifying please break down by financial year so when the output would be delivered this will calculate the total outputs to be de delivered which is column m you can also add some narrative in column n to describe how you will collect measure and evidence the outputs we would expect all projects to deliver against one or more of the primary outputs linked to the funding stream you're applying under full output and outcome definitions can be found in the applicant support section of the Cornwall and Arves of Silly Good Growth website. Secondary outputs. Many projects would deliver wider program outputs that we want to capture. Please start from the left with the drop down box to select the priority the project has been delivered against. This will then allow options for the indicator drop down. And finally, the outputs. To select, this will then allow you to put all the data into those fields. You do not need to list outputs here that you've covered in the primary outputs section above. Tab 3B, outcome targets. Outcome targets may be delivered during the project and afterwards. For example, jobs might be created a year after the project finishes. The form allows to capture that. Please follow a similar approach to the previous tab, 3A, identifying and completing the primary outcome rows that are relevant to your project, including quantifying across financial years and describing how you will measure these. Please select the relevant drop downs. Again, quantifying by financial year and providing detail on how you will measure. Tab four, good growth targets. The targets are based on the three good growth principles, which are an important aspect of the Shared Prosperity Fund Good Growth Program. The good growth principle areas are clean and green, business and economy, and diversity and inclusion. We expect all projects to make a contribution and stretch their organisation to deliver excellence in these areas. Full details of the Good Growth principles and further support are available on our Good Growth website. C targets relate to clean and green. Here is the opportunity to capture the net zero or nature recovery elements of your project. For example, C1, reduction in CO2 emissions. Will your project involve measures to reduce your energy consumption, e.g. a new piece of low energy manufacturing equipment, which you could baseline current energy usage now, and then when you actually install the equipment and measure energy use, can you calculate the reduction in energy use and then convert that into a CO2 equivalent emission saving? There are carbon calculator tools available online to allow you to do that. Equally, by specifying timber glue laminated beams in your new build, 
instead of concrete or steel beams. Does this allow a carbon saving? Can you calculate that carbon saving by choosing materials with a lower embedded carbon footprint? BE targets relate to business and economy. This allows you to demonstrate the wider economic benefits of your project. We expect all projects to pay the real living wage for jobs created and move the whole organisation onto the real living wage by either project completion, if grant request is below 50,000, or within two years, if you're requesting above 50,000. What is your current baseline and over future years, can you demonstrate how you will move the workforce onto the real living wage? EQ targets relate to equality, diversity and inclusion. Please show how you will create opportunity for all. This could be by reducing the gender pay gap through new approaches to staff recruitment, carers leave, flexible work hours and so on. We're looking for projects to baseline their current levels and then propose a target that can be measured to show successful delivery. Tab five, risk. We are keen to understand the key risks to delivery of your project and how you manage and mitigate the risks. For example, what happens if you, project applicant, falls ill? Who will deliver the project to time and budget? Your mitigation may be to hire in a project manager to deliver the project or train other colleagues in the organisation to lead the project. Other risk examples could include the lead supplier going bankrupt. What mitigation would you put in place? Each project's risks will be different due to scale and scope of the proposal. We are looking for you to demonstrate that you've considered these main risks and how you would manage them. We look forward to receiving your completed application, annex and supporting documentation by the review point deadline.